Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and I'd like to talk to you today about defining motion, specifically about position, velocity, and acceleration. So to begin with, position. An object's position is its location at a given point in time. The vector from the origin to the object's position is known as the position vector, R, oftentimes with the line over it to show it's a vector or it's in bold, or sometimes you'll find books that also use the symbol S. In one dimension, you can simplify this. Position is given simply by the x-coordinate. Displacement, on the other hand, has to do with a moving object. As an object moves, its position changes. This change in position is known as the displacement vector, delta r or delta s, where delta r is given by the final position of r minus the initial position of r. So the final position vector minus the initial position vector. In one dimension, again, position is given by the x-coordinate, and displacement, therefore, would be delta x. If we look at how fast an object moves, the rate at which its position changes, we'll start talking about velocity. Average velocity is the displacement during a time interval divided by that time interval. Let's take a look at how we would calculate average velocity. If we have a graph here in the bottom left, we want to find the average velocity between time equals 1 and time equals 6 seconds. So from time 1 to time 6 seconds, as marked on the graph with the two dots. The average velocity, then, is the change in position, delta x, divided by the time interval, or final x minus initial x, over final time minus initial time. If we calculate that out, v average here becomes our final x. In this case, that'll be around 6 meters minus our initial x position. Over here, that looks to be right about 2.5 meters, all divided by our time interval, 6 seconds minus 1 second, which should give us an average velocity of about 0 0.7 meters per second. Alternately, we could take and draw a line through these two points, and if we go and find the slope of that line, the slope of that line, if we calculate it very accurately, will also be 0 0.7 meters per second. But that doesn't really tell you everything you might want to know. What about instantaneous velocity? Well, if you look at average velocity over a very small time interval, make that delta t smaller and smaller and smaller until it's infinitesimally small, you obtain instantaneous velocity. Let's look at calculating instantaneous velocity here. Instantaneous velocity, v, is the limit of the average velocity as that time interval delta t approaches zero, or the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta x over delta t, just our definition of average velocity, which is the first derivative of x with respect to time. So if this was our initial graph over on the left, and we wanted to know what the instantaneous velocity was at this given point in time over here on the right, what we're really doing is we're taking a slope of the line tangent to the curve at that point. Take the slope here, we would get about 2 meters per second. So the derivative of x with respect to t is really giving us the slope of the line tangent to the curve at that specific point in time. Let's take a look at calculating displacement. The area under the velocity time graph gives you displacement. So if we wanted to know the displacement of an object from a velocity versus time graph, where the velocity is in meters per second, time is in seconds, we would go between time three and seven seconds and take the area under the graph. Add up all that area. That tells you the displacement of the object over that time interval. Formally, you could write that as delta x equals the integral, just the area between this t0 and some final time t, of the velocity function of time times the differential of time. How did we get that? Well, we can start with our definition of instantaneous velocity. Velocity as a function of time is dx dt, which implies then, let's separate out our variables, get all the x's on one side, equals v of t dt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides. The left-hand side we're going to integrate from some initial x, x0, to some final x. And the right-hand side we're going to integrate from some initial time t to some final time t. 
the integral of the differential of x is just going to be x evaluated from our limits of integration from x naught to x. And that will equal, we'll leave the right hand side in differential form, or integral form, integral from t0 to t of v of t dt. This left hand side here just means we're going to take this variable and plug it in and then subtract it from this variable. So this becomes, I replace x with what's in the upper right, x minus, now I replace x with what's in the bottom right, x naught, which by the way is delta x is equal to the integral from t naught to t of v of t dt. And that hopefully looks fairly familiar how we could calculate displacement or derive that integral. Let's take a look now at acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. The slope of the velocity time graph gives you acceleration, just like the slope of the position time or displacement time graph gave you velocity. And the area under the acceleration time graph gives you the change in velocity. So we have this symmetry of of kinematic uh, quantities, you could say. Let's take a look here. If we want to calculate acceleration, average acceleration is just going to be change in velocity divided by time. And again, if we want instantaneous acceleration, we'll take the limit as the time interval delta t approaches zero of delta v over delta t, our average acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, or the second derivative of x with respect to time. So again, if we had something like a velocity time graph and we wanted to know the exact acceleration at a given point in time, we would draw a line tangent to the curve at that point, take the slope of that line, and that gives you the instantaneous acceleration, which is the first derivative of velocity. All right, let's see if we can't calculate velocity from acceleration. If the acceleration is a function of time, is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, we can do the same thing we did before. Let's separate our variables first. dv equals a of t dt. And again, we're just going to integrate both sides. Let's start from some initial value of velocity, v0, to some final value of velocity, v. And on the right-hand side, we'll integrate from some initial value of time, t0, to some final time, t. All right, next step, the integral of the differential of velocity will just be velocity evaluated from our limits of integration from v naught to v. And we'll leave the right-hand side as it sits right now, integral from t0 to t of the acceleration function. Now, what do these limits mean? What we're gonna do is take our variable on the left and we're going to first replace it with what's in the upper right. So v replaced with v is still v. Now we're going to take what's in the bottom right and replace it. So V minus V zero, which is delta V equals the integral from T zero to T of the acceleration with respect to time. So we can get velocity from acceleration again. Now, I know a lot of you are probably just getting into calculus, and as you start doing that, you'll learn the more detailed, the correct way to do derivatives. Probably start off with limits and evaluate them, and slowly move into the formulas for the differentials. However, for the purposes of this course, we want to get right into calculating these. So I'm going to give you a brief uh, chance to look at polynomial derivatives, because those are an easy way to start. So let's begin by looking at a general formula where x is equal to some constant a times our variable t raised to the nth power. If that's the case, then the derivative of x, the first derivative, would be that power n times our constant times our variable raised to the power n minus 1. So let's just look at an example as opposed to going through a bunch of rules about how these work. Probably easier to just walk through one or two. So if we're given this function, x of t is 2 minus 4t plus 2t squared plus 2t squared equals 3t. That doesn't look right. How about we make that minus 3t? 
let's find the velocity as a function of time. Velocity as a function of time, then, is going to be the derivative of x with respect to t. The derivative of a constant, well, we have no variable there, or that's, so that's going to be 0, minus 4t. Okay, the power on t there is just going to be 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. We're going to have 4 plus 2 times our constant 2 times our variable here to 1 less power minus our power 3 times our constant 3, 9, times our variable to the power, whatever we had, minus 1. There's our velocity function. And these take some practice. Acceleration, then, is going to be the derivative of velocity with respect to t. So we can take that same formula. Now let's take the derivative of that function. Derivative of 0 and negative 4, both are constants. Their derivative will be 0. Plus, the derivative of 4t is just going to be 4. Minus 2 times 9 is 18 times our variable t to the power 2 minus 1 or 1. So acceleration will just be 4 minus 18t. Hopefully that gets you started with position, velocity, acceleration, and there's a lot more to do in this area. I'm just trying to give a very brief overview of some of the basic concepts to get you started. Of course, you're gonna to need to spend more time with it, go into a lot more depth for this to really uh, make some good sense. For more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.